I'm looking forward to that movie. Congratulations. <laughs> Ja, ik vind dus dat dit echt niet kan worden. Ik bedoel, maar nee, maar, maar moeten, we, moeten we nu nog antwoorden of niet? Want, want... Oh, my, my. Goh. Ja, dan zwijg, dan zwijg ik liever. Ik heb het zelf gezegd. Ja. Ik ben eigenlijk bij een vrij eenvoudige ingreep ook gekwetst geraakt aan de stem, aan de stem van. The Spoonie One, Noah Antweiler of The Spoonie Experiment. One of the original YouTubers, somebody who was back there at the very beginning putting out new and innovative content. The kind of content that drew people to him because he was funny and because he was entertaining. He was somebody that could create videos that you would come back to watch time and time again. Part of that was the variety of the content that was presented. One day you'd be watching a Reb Brown review of Yore. The next day you'd be watching a SWAT 4 playthrough. Whether you were interested in learning about the Ultima games or you wanted to see him rip apart Final Fantasy, there was a host of content to watch. Hell, you could even listen to him talk about an old British television show, and you would tune back in because you wanted to see more of it, because you enjoyed listening to him talk about things, about subjects that you were into, video games, movies, television shows, board games. He had the ability to hold an audience, and that audience is something he grew throughout the years. He was able to attract people to his content, to build up a fan base and a following that would follow him from place to place, be it YouTube or Blip TV, that guy with the glasses, or even his own website. A lot of people back in the day were very, very big Spoonie One fans, myself included. One of the first videos I ever saw him put out was a review of Bayou Billy, a video game I had no interest in. I had never played before, but I enjoyed the video he put up. Now, looking back on it, the audio is terrible, the video is terrible, but back in the day, that didn't really matter. I mean, this was a video that went up in 2007, 10 years ago, barely two years into YouTube existing. And yet, I found it so funny and interesting that I began to follow him and watch his video reviews. But the key word there was, I did, was, it's all past tense. A lot of his fans are past tense. If this was the story of somebody who had great success, who had found and achieved something, we wouldn't be talking about him. But Spoonie One is a great example of somebody destroying themselves. He is a man that spent half a decade building up a fan base, a fan base that would win him a Mashable Award, that would make him lots of money, get him success, get his name out there, and build a brand, and then spend the last half of that decade absolutely shooting himself in the foot, destroying and sabotaging his own success through his abrasive personality, his behavior, and his distaste for his own fan base. And that, coupled with his inability to fulfill his promises, to deliver on his obligations or adhere to the schedule which he himself posted, to give people their dollars worth for donating and supporting him, when you put all of those together, it led to his absolute decline and to his falling down from where he used to be, from the position that he used to occupy. Now, there are a few touchstone moments, a few key pivots in the history of Spoonie One that I really want to hone in on and focus on because it helps to highlight when the shift took place between the up-and-coming Spoonie and the absolute decline into depression and non-creation that he has become that really encapsulates who he is now. And I think there is no better place to start when we look at the downfall of Spoonie One, then with his firing at that guy with the glasses. What is your problem? Look, I double bagged it, okay? <laughs> a farewell to Noah Antweiler, aka Spoonie One, with Channel Awesome. After recent events, Noah the Spoonie One Antweiler and Channel Awesome have decided to part ways. Noah has made it clear that he wishes to pursue a course that is different from ours. We feel that with these different aims, it is better for Noah to be free to pursue his own goals unhindered by us. Noah has been an immense talent on the site, and we thank him for his years of hard service, both in numerous episodes of the Spoonie Experiment and in the Channel Awesome anniversary films. We sincerely wish him the best in all future endeavors and hope that he continues to put out great quality work, the staff at Channel Awesome. Now, this was the public memorandum, the official statement from Channel Awesome about the parting of ways between Noah and Channel Awesome itself, and it refers to recent events. Now, this was put up on June 21st of 2012. So exactly what recent events is this official statement referring to? Well, believe it or not, the entire split between Channel Awesome and the Spoonie One was brought about by one single tweet. At Jesu Otaku. You know, if things don't work out with you and Nash 076, I'd be happy to chain you to a pipe in my basement. 
and love you my way. Well, bring out the gimp. That one single solitary tweet would set into motion a chain of events that would inevitably lead Noah to being kicked off of Channel Awesome, having his site and forums removed from hosting on That Guy with the Glasses, and creating a rift between him and the other content producers on the website. Now, when we take a look at this event, one of the interesting things to note is this tweet went up in May, but that official statement came out in June. So why was there a month difference between Noah's initial tweet and Channel Awesome splitting ways with him? Well, that all comes down to one content creator. Man, that's messed up. When a woman screws you so bad, you wish you were a dog. At the Spoonie one. Seriously, I can't follow you anymore, dude. Aw, Obscurus Lupa hates me now, too. Gonna have to bust out the Adelaide playlist for the breakup. You joked about chaining Hope up in your basement and raping her. I got no sympathy for you. Nearly one month from the initial tweet that Noah put up, which was a joke response to Jesu Otaku, Obscurus Lupa gets into the conversation and dredges it back up, and this helps to ignite a firestorm. In the following weeks, once Obscura Lupa brought this back up, Spoonie was bombarded with people telling him that he should make rape jokes, that he stepped over the line. Now, Spoonie being Spoonie didn't take that too well. He's not a very big fan of criticism, as anybody who is a financial backer or longtime fan of his can tell you. Don't tell me how to play. And so he threw a shit fit on Twitter and had a meltdown at being chastised by fellow members of the website. Now, sadly, a lot of these have been deleted and a lot of people have put their accounts on protected mode, but I can show you some of the tweets surrounding that timeline to give you an idea of what was going on. Oh, I know. I'm a monster. A beast. I say such mean things, I force you all to listen to them. I'm offended. I hit the block button. Woo. Crisis averted. That was close. Could it be because my worst crime in all of this was being an asshole on Twitter, a remedy for which is not reading my comments? At Michael Novelli. Most of the people I've raped are dudes. I've got video proof. Um, I don't know if that's cool. I've been the victim of sexual assault. I know you're joking, but still. Oh my god, I was rude to a co-worker, and somehow the world still exists. How can that be? Like Bennett the Sage, I'm gonna be rude to him. Hey Bennett, fuck you. I, I tried to stop. I tried to be a better man. But I must confess, I plan to be rude again. Oh god, help me. It's the least I deserve. I was rude on the internet. Super villain. It's the fourth anniversary video. I believe they plan to digitally replace me with a large, greasy slug. So the basic chronology for the events that happened. Spoonie tweets out a joke tweet at Jesu Otaku, a contributor on That Guy with the Glasses. Nearly a full month later, Obscurus Lupa replies to a different tweet and dredges that up. From that moment onward, Spoonie goes into defensive mode, throws a shit fit on Twitter, and begins to get bombarded by people telling him he's being rude and that he shouldn't make jokes about rape. Now, one thing to add into the mix of all these events playing out because there's a conspiracy theory that surrounds Spoonie being let go from that guy with the glasses. Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. Thank you, Obscurus Lupa. I love you. Love you back. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with who these two people are, Holly Christine would be somebody who worked as a PRHR person at that guy with the glasses when this was going down. And Scarlet Topia was Spoonie's ex-girlfriend. Somebody who he had a bad breakup with. Somebody who his fan base really didn't like. They called her the Scarlet Bitch because she would ban people from the forums and seem to be extremely rude to people. So here you have an ex-girlfriend thanking Obscurus Lupa who brought up an old tweet that got Spoonie kicked off the website talking to somebody in HRPR who's saying they love them and they have this playful back and forth banter. The timing of it is very suspicious, especially because this conversation happened exactly after Spoonie was let go from the website. Hmm. Really makes you think. Now, Scarlet is her own story altogether. She was uh, not well liked, as I said, and Spoonie did not handle the breakup very well. He went into a bit of a depressive spiral, and it affected the content he put out. But I don't want you to get the impression that this was just Obscurus Lupa, or HRPR person, or an ex-girlfriend, because there were others who were voicing their displeasure with Spoonie at the time these events were taking place. One of them would be Lord Cat. Now, Lord Cat was a contributor to That Guy with the Glasses who went on to do his own podcast. He has his own website. And he released a stream, a podcast, right as this event was kind of winding down, right at the tail end of it, right when That Guy with the Glasses released 
their public statement parting ways with Spoonie. And he gives some opinions on him about what it was like to work with him and have to associate with him that helped to paint a fuller picture of Spoonie's relationship with the website and things that might have contributed to him being let go that are below the surface level, that weren't just talked about in relation to this one episode of tweeting. And so officially for the first time on a show, I've discussed it before, but let's discuss why I left that guy with the glasses. Now, I am breaking my agreement here with that guy with the glasses by discussing this, but I think it's time the whole world, Spoonie, heard just how much of a fucking idiot you truly are. You and that other idiot, Joe. When you were at E3 that one year, and you decided to go up and down the hallways screaming about XCOM's betrayal, and Joe decided to ask people, can I choke you on camera? Guess what happened, Spoonie? Guess what fucking happened? The whole gaming industry turned its back on me. Not you, not Joe, not Blistered Thumbs, me. I went to GDC the following year, Spoonie. I went to GDC the following year, and I had a chance to interview Notch, Mojang, Specifications, Minecraft. Had a chance. A fucking chance. He was hot then. That was going to be huge for this week in games. That was going to be huge for the stream. It was going to be amazing. And you know what happened? The representative at Mojang caught wind that we were going to interview Notch. And he stepped in. And he said, oh, I've heard of you. You're with that guy with the glasses. You're with Blistered Thumbs. And I tried to tell them, no, I'm not. But he said my name was associated with them. And he heard what you did. Making a fucking jackass of yourself at E3. You fucking moron. So they shot it down. And then word spread at GDC. Oh, I heard about you. You were the guy at E3. They thought I was the guy at E3 making a jackass of everyone. I was there trying to be a legitimate member of the business of the gaming industry, and I've worked my ass off to separate myself from you. Every time. You just don't get it. Every single fucking time. You act like a complete fucking jackass. It has repercussions for everyone you're associated with, and you don't give a shit. That's why I left that guy with the glasses. I can't fucking stand you. Now, Lord Cat references E3 and Spoonie running around screaming betrayal at the top of his lungs. He's referring to this specific video clip. And so we, I saw the footage and there was one word searing through my mind like, like bolts of fire. And that word, betrayal! What? Betrayal! Betrayed me! This game sucks! It is nothing to do with XCOM. Nothing! Nothing! That would be what he's referring to. I don't jump onto someone else's stream and scream about how what they're doing is wrong. No, you're uh, not. You're fucking laughing your asses off and being stupid chuckleheads. Why did you come in? To tell you guys you're being really You came in the call just to shit on this. <laughs> oh, like any... Like you're shitting I, on this game any more than you are, We're just joking with Jason! Chris. Why do you have to come in and shit on this? Like, we're, like we're l lashing out at him. Jason was laughing. All right. Um, listen, we have an encounter here. All right, I'm out. I'm out. That is a nice, long, awkward pause. Nothing better than being in a conversation where you know nobody wants you there and finally getting a clue about it and getting the fuck out. Gotta, gotta give it a couple of minutes of dead air before you really hone in on the fact that people don't like you and wish you would fuck off. Now, one thing to take note of is that Angry Joe himself responded to Lord Cat's podcast and denied the allegations that were made. He said he didn't go around trying to choke people at E3 and that Lord Cat was unfamiliar with what happened or he was simply making things up. And to an extent, he even tried to defend Spoonie One a little bit. But regardless of who you believe in this entire menagerie of opinions, whether it's Lord Cat when he says that Spoonie One was abrasive and that it was a detriment to business interests to work with him, whether it's Jesu Otaku or Obscurus Lupa when they say that they found the joke offensive and it made them uncomfortable, or people who look at the connection between the person in HR and PR and an ex-girlfriend. Regardless of the motivation for why this took place, the end result is the same. Spoonie was severed. Ties were cut with that guy with the glasses. Now, a month or so later, after all these events had played themselves out, Spoonie put up a twit longer talking about this. Okay, everyone. I just want to make it clear that Lupa did not get me fired, nor was she in any way linked to my departure from that guy with the glasses. My personal issues with Lupa went public and quickly got out of hand, for which we are both to blame. 
I was crude and disingenuous and provoked her to anger, which quickly pushed things too far. We both want the bickering to end. And as far as I'm concerned, our argument is over and done with. We're both moving on, and we just want the anger to stop. Sadly for Spoonie, this would be too little too late. There was no going back. And while in the future the relationship would be amicable with him showing up in different videos on the website and interacting with Doug Walker and others, he would never end up going back to the way it was. But this is just one of those keystone events when it comes to Spoonie's decline. And even though he took a hit, he had a girlfriend break up with him, he was kicked off Channel Awesome, he eventually did start to somewhat recover. This would all come to a head with the creation of his Patreon account. And what I truly believe is the death knell of his career. Hey guys, bunch of big news lately. I haven't had a chance to report on it till now because I was out of state. But um, I guess the big news is Somehow, just you guys have reached the uh, the Patreon goal where uh, it was listed that I would start work on a movie, and I was just I I was blown away by this. <laughs> it was like you guys are the best fans in the world. Oh my god! Yes, I'd be blown away too by the fact I was making five thousand dollars a month to produce a movie looking at the archive of his patreon account from around that time just before it went over the edge you can see in the bottom left hand corner production pre-production of a movie five thousand dollars he actually hit that goal and this this exact moment is when everything really really went to shit and when i say movie i mean movie not disastrous television pilots we're not talking about it came from beyond midnight don't care just go to leslie Always happy to be of help, Joshua. Lord knows I spent seven years in college amassing two master's degrees in both English literature and journalism to finally realize my lifelong dream of appearing on late night television, reviewing Z-grade cinematic slop like this with unwashed rock band roadies like you. Leslie! A show so hated by his fan base that he had to yell at them on Twitter and block their comments on the videos itself. Now, we're speaking about a movie, a full-fledged Spoonie One movie. Now, an interesting fact about Spoonie is that he loves to disable comments. It's not just a recent trend. And if you go to his website and you look at the announcement information for this goal being hit and him producing this movie, you'll quickly notice there are no comments listed. But that wasn't always the case. And if you use Discus itself, you can actually find what people had to say at the time about this specific announcement. And it is eye-opening because even back then, they knew this was going to end in disaster. And when I say disaster, well, ask yourself, what Spoonie movie have you watched? Because it's been three fucking years since he hit that Patreon goal. From Crippen, three years ago. Well, it's happened. Donations aimed towards helping someone make internet reviews have now officially given them an excuse. I'm working on the movie, guys. That takes time to make less reviews. In fact, the movie is a disastrous idea. It will never happen. And Spoonie knows it'll never happen. What he also knows, though, is that it will be at least two years or so before we can reasonably expect any sort of progress on a movie, which is two more years of a free ride courtesy of Patreon and his army of loyal chumps. Someone suggested that as a way to provide content, Spoonie could stream his work sessions. You realize that won't happen, right? He'd actually have to do work then because there would be evidence of what his schedule is really like. Sure, the internet concentrates suckers like nothing ever has before, as shown by sites like Patreon, but please, please do yourself a favor. Take your money and spend it on something that you'll get something out of. I'm not mad that someone else is making money. That's fine. I make good money at my job, too. Plus, I've learned that focusing on what other people have and how much money they make will only make me miserable. I'm just saddened when I see people taken advantage of. It's wrong and that doesn't sit right with me. Well, Crippen should change his name to Nostra fucking Domus because he completely called what inevitably ended up happening. There never was a Spoonie movie, and even more on point, there were less and less reviews. Now, the Patreon amount didn't actually stay at $5,000 for long. Eventually, people began to get worried. They became a little nervous about how this was turning out. They were giving large sums of money to Spoonie to make this product he promised to deliver, and that he never delivered on. Meanwhile, while they're waiting for something to be posted about the movie progress itself, reviews and content that he normally put up began to slow down to a trickle of what it used to be. From Ryan S. three years ago, Shut off the Twitter like you said. Since your latest video, there have been at least over a hundred tweets that are definitely not just composed of spontaneous conversations. If you are truly honest about enacting the promises you have made to me and other Patreons, do what you said. 
the fact is you are being paid over five thousand dollars a month that is an insane amount of money that me and other college graduates would kill for and you're doing this for what supposedly is for what you love if so why is it that you're struggling to maintain any sense of a schedule or production quality why is it that when anyone who criticizes the quality of your videos is mysteriously banned from the site I don't do this to troll, but in love of what you've given us. I still watch countless past videos and marvel at the balance of criticism and humor. They have inspired me to go back to making videos again despite having classes, an internship, and a relationship. However, I have taken my Patreon away because I have lost faith in your ability to deliver any semblance of consistent quality content. I haven't seen any increase in the quality of your videos. In fact, most videos are now vlogs that have basically no editing. And even then, the wrestling videos are completely unintelligible to anyone who hasn't grown up watching wrestling. And the Patreon goals? What happened to those? Are you telling me that you can't edit together a three-hour Cards Against Humanity for the people who are personally paying for your livelihood? Are you telling me you can't piece together a single DVD in almost six months? Now, Ryan's referring to the Patreon goal tiers, and you'll see that he offered different perks for different donation amounts. Some of these were streams, some of these were DVDs. None of these, none of these were delivered on. So what do you imagine Spoonie's response to people when they level criticism or they have complaints about his production value, his quality, or his promised content? What do you think his reaction is? Dude, it's been over a week since your vlog where you said you were pretty much done with Twitter. I'm asking these questions as part of my scripting, dude. Believe it or not, this is important, so lay the hell off. Wow, um, excuse me, but I'm not sure all of your over 100 plus tweets have to do with scripting. Further, I do not have the time, you know. I don't have to justify myself to you. In fact, I'm wasting it arguing with you. Except, in your vlog, you said you were done with Twitter, period. I'm certainly done with you, period. I understand relevant tweets like when you're watching a wrestling thing and giving running commentary on Twitter. Why don't you monitor your own time usage and let me handle mine, okay? I've got it handled. Fine, but if fans start pulling their Patreon funding like some already are, don't be surprised, all I'm saying. So kindly fuck off and let me handle my business. Now this Twitter conversation and the previous post that I read out to you mentioned a promise Spoonie made about social media. He himself put this into the video when he was talking about his Patreon goal in which he promised he was walking away from all social media because it ate up too much of his time. He wanted to focus on delivering the content he was being paid to create. The first thing, and the biggest thing that's probably going to change that you may notice, is uh, social media, Twitter. From now on, you are essentially going to notice uh, my complete... Uh, my Twitter account is you know, basically going to be completely abandoned. And do you know how that turned out? The complete opposite of what he said. Hey, remember when Spoonie promised to stop using Twitter so much so he would actually get the fucking work done? Even with a few months break at the beginning of last year, he's back up to averaging over a thousand tweets per month. More than 38 every day. Any fanboys want to dispute the facts? Yes, that's one of the interesting characteristics about Noah. He is addicted to social media. Now, I can sympathize. I know what it's like to be addicted to Twitter. Luckily, I had an intervention. Jack said, no more, and I'm cured of my malady. But Spoonie outdoes me. He is so hooked on shitposting that he has a Twitter account where he pretends to be his own dog. You know, there is a point to walk away from social media, and it's right around then. Have you ever wanted to hit somebody with a fucking shovel because of the crap they write online? Because that is the physical reaction that I am having right now, reading this crap. But there must be an upside to this. If Spoonie is so dedicated to spending such a vast majority of his life online, there must be open communication with his backers on Patreon. Surely a man who can post 83,000 tweets on Twitter can update people financially backing him on a semi-regular basis. If we were to go over to his Patreon right now, I'm sure we'd see a message from just a few days ago. Oh no, wait, that's a year ago. That's not a few days ago, that's a fucking year ago. It's been nearly a year since he's posted anything, anything. Not on the community section, not on the post section, nothing after this one last post. Now, I want you to imagine what the impact of this kind of behavior is on somebody who's making $5,000 a month on Patreon. Remember, he's been financed to create a movie, and yet his content has disappeared, and he's not updating any of his backers. What do you imagine that $5,000 looks like now? That's what it looks like. From $5,000 down to $740, and the most remarkable thing about that is not that he is making $740 when he was making $5,000. It's that he's not making $0. Because I cannot fathom the people that would still be financially supporting a man 
who doesn't care enough about them to at least update them once a year, who is dedicated to shitposting on Twitter rather than producing content, who doesn't deliver on his tiered promises of DVDs and Cards Against Humanity live streams, who doesn't produce the movie he said he was going to produce, who doesn't adhere to the promises he makes of breaking ties with social media so he can focus on reciprocating backer support. I am astonished that he is still making $740. Now, to give you a comparison to somebody who's actually doing better than Spoonie is right now, at this point, he has fallen so far that the king of content himself, Mr. Honk Snort, is making more fucking money on Patreon than he is. Spoonie is heads and shoulders above Phil as far as talent is concerned. But do you know what Phil does that Spoonie doesn't? Phil talks to his fucking Patreons. Phil actually puts content out when he says he's going to put it out. Phil actually holds polls and talks to the people that financially back him. That is why Dark Side Phil, DSP Gaming, is making more money right now on Patreon than Spoonie 1 is. That is fucking mind-blowing. If you were to look at a graph of Spoonie's financial support on Patreon, you can see it's a nosedive. It goes completely tits up and into the ground, and that is a direct result of Spoonie One's own behavior and attitudes towards the people financially backing him. He does not give a shit. He does not care about the people that are supporting him financially. He doesn't deem them interesting or worthy enough to have a conversation with them, to keep them in the loop as far as his production is concerned, and yet he still makes $740. The only way that I can wrap my mind around this is to imagine that people are still supporting him because they have auto renewal enabled and they forgot that they donated money to him. Because if it were me and I were donating money to somebody, I would expect at least two times a year that they'd give enough of a shit to say, hey, thank you. But do you want to know what the really disgusting thing about this is? It's not just that he doesn't give a shit about the people that support him. It's not just that he refuses to interact with them or update them or deliver promises. It's this. I want you to take a really close look, because if you go to his website, you'll see that he has an Amazon wish list put up there. You can click it to buy him gifts through the website itself. Do you notice anything about the dates related to the products that are listed? Spoonie One, who doesn't give a shit about his backers, who won't update them or post anything on his own Patreon where people are paying him money, will instead spend the time to go update his fucking Amazon wish list. He has updated his Amazon wish list more than he has financial backers on Patreon. The only thing he really seems to care about is you giving him shit. What he doesn't seem to care about is actually reciprocating that. Look at those dates. December 16th, December 25th, March 5th. That is more posting on his fucking wish list than he's done in Patreon in probably years. I need to do a thing where, like, on this day, we do Patreon stuff. And I love doing the Patreon stuff. It's just that this day has to be the separate thing. So, like, it's going to be the Patreon day where April and I sit down... We watch a Patreon movie. I do some audio greetings, you know, uh, and then I start working on the movie and the DVD. So I got to budget my time out for that because without that, without that, I lose you guys. And without you guys, there's nothing else. Apparently the going rate for nothing else these days is $740. Color me surprised. One of the remarkable things that you're going to find, whether it's Patreon donors that have pulled support or people who have done videos talking about Spoonie One and how they were fans and they're not anymore, is that these aren't people that are driven by hate. They don't just dislike him and want to troll him for no reason. They are genuine fans of his content who feel that they've been mistreated and that mistreatment has driven them to speak out about it. Here's just a sampling taken throughout the years on his community page on Patreon to give you an idea of the melancholy of these particular individuals. Hey Spoonie, been watching yourself with glee and love for years, but unlike a subscription on YouTube, I'm actually shilling out of pocket here. And just truthfully, and with no hard feelings, I don't feel like I'm seeing anything I want to fund happening over the course of at least the last six months now. While Livewire is a good watch to throw in the background and do other things, what I wanted to pay for was the produced videos. Even your produced commentary videos are fantastic watches. But ever since the Patreon, things have really taken a turn for the sparse in terms of the content I thought I'd be helping fuel. I will pledge again, I'm not angry. I just want to see some of the videos first, and then I'll be back. That's all. I gotta say, Spoonie, I backed you because you were my favorite online video person for a while, but you've really fallen. No content in so long. I'm sorry to say this, but I'm pulling funding until I see more. How you are making more than Cinema Snob when he puts out quality videos every week is beyond me. I feel like I should add to this thread as well, as I'm a highest tier supporter who jumped off. I'm very sorry for that, and would truly much rather see you, Spoonie, not just enjoy everyone's support, but also continue to, with full motivation, create the great content you've always come up with. 
For justifying my $100 pledge, I wouldn't even need the Cards Against Humanity game, or any personalized kind of perk at all. i just like to see you create content. Currently, things seem to have slowed down, which makes it hard to justify $100 per month that have no visible effect when there are others out there that also deserve part of my Patreon budget. Like the other posters, I really hope I will soon be able to change my mind and support you again. Hey man, I've been a huge supporter of yours going all the way back to Ripper, but I just can't justify pledging $50 a month anymore. I mean, most if not all of your content has been vlogs, and for like the last three months it's basically been three parts of the same video. I was really looking forward to receiving the $50 reward, but it's been nearly a year. I wanted to ask you if you had any status updates on the stuff, so I actually created a Twitter account and asked you on there, and sent you an email to you as well, but that was several weeks ago and I haven't heard anything. Since this is essentially the only other place where I can leave any comments, I just wanted to let you know I feel really bad about dropping my support, but I felt it would be honest if I let you know first. I'm still going to follow the content you put out, and I wish you all the best. Thanks. And those sorts of sentiments aren't unique to the people that are posting on Patreon. They're not unique to the people that financially supported Spoonie. You'll find this is a common thread in the vast majority of content that is critical of Spoonie, be it comments that are posted on his subreddit, content that's posted on his Patreon or on social media, even the vast amount of videos that have been put out talking about what happened to Spoonie 1. And that thread, that, that piece that seems to resonate, is that the majority of people that are critical of him now were fans of his then. These aren't people that are out specifically to troll him. They don't want to mess with Spoonie One. They don't want to screw with his head. They are actually upset fans that feel bad they can't support him as they used to. They don't watch his content anymore because the content he puts out is subpar. They don't financially back him anymore because he doesn't deliver on any of his promises. And instead of getting downright pissed off about it, they actually feel sorry about it. They want to support him. They want to watch his content, but they just can't do it anymore. Spoonie One is an individual who has actually driven people that like him to have to hate him, not because they dislike him, but because they have no other choice in getting through to him. And this downward spiral, this trajectory into the dirt, into the gutter that he is on right now, extends well beyond financial. If you look at his metrics related to his YouTube account, you will see that it is tail-dived as well. He's now well within the range of pure stagnation with subs and views basically grinding to a halt. And does that come as any shock or surprise to somebody when you see the kind of quality content that he's putting out now? What made Spoonie popular before were these long, detailed videos where he would talk about a franchise or a subject, where he would infuse humor into his criticism and tie it up into a nice point. And that has been replaced by live wires and live streams on YouTube of him sitting in near silence and getting angry at people if they dare to comment something he doesn't like. He will ban you outright if you say something he dislikes. He will ban you outright if he's just in the mood to do it. The diminishing audience he has that have still shown up to show support and he still shits on them. And one of the craziest factors about this is that he still has the ego of a man who's on his way to the top. Now, only 523 people watching a stream that was uh, not announced ahead of time. Oh yeah, my fan base is just withering up. How many watch your stream, motherfucker? I've got to say, Spoonie, when you have a YouTube account with over 100,000 subscribers and you can barely pull 500 people to watch a live stream, you are in serious fucking trouble. You were an individual at one point that was making $5,000 on Patreon, whose name was bandied about everywhere, where people were talking about the content you produced. And now you find yourself in a situation where 500 people are watching you sit in a dark room and ban people, and you actually have a goddamn ego about that. Like it's some kind of an accomplishment. You have completely lost the plot. And with an ego like his, it becomes easy to understand why it is he resorts to banning people, blocking comments, and disabling ratings on his video. He cannot cope with the negative criticisms that come his way. Now, I've gone over a lot in relation to Spoonie, and believe me, there's even more that I could cover. I could talk about his relationships with people like Scarlett and April. I could talk about some of the other content that he's put up and some of the other situations he's been in. But I wanted to focus on the two pivotal moments that I saw really leading to his downfall. One was the loss of a support network, in this case, that guy with the glasses. They weren't hosting his content and they weren't promoting him anymore. And the other was his Patreon, where he pledged to do outrageous things and failed to deliver on even the most minimal of promises. 
The spoony one is someone who took their success and completely destroyed it on their own. While you could look at the events at that guy with the glasses is outside of his control, even if you want to put aside all the things that people like Lord Cat said, if you want to go with the idea that this was a conspiracy by people that were associated with the site and his ex-girlfriend, or by people that just disliked him, even if you want to completely clear that away, when it comes to the Patreon bit, when it comes to how he treats his backers and his donors, that is all on Spoonie. That is Spoonie 1 in control in his own backyard, his words and nobody else's, his behaviors and nobody else's. He's not being dictated to, he's not being told how to behave. That is exactly how he feels and he acts that way. He does not care about the people that have pledged support and it's fucking disgusting. It's disgusting that somebody can take that kind of support, that kind of fan base of people who really want to see him succeed and spit in their face. That he's more interested in updating an Amazon wish list than the people that are still paying him $740 a month for doing nothing. Spoonie could have been a huge YouTuber. Even after being thrown off that guy with the glasses, he could be sitting on an account now that has a million plus subs and gaining a ton of revenue through ads and Patreon support. The only reason that is not happening is the result of one thing and one thing only, Spoonie himself. And the thing that really sums up how his fans and his supporters, be they financial or otherwise, truly feel about the situation, truly feel about how Spoonie One has treated them, is said no better than by Spoonie himself. Betrayal! What? Betrayal! Betrayed me! And with that, part two is finally done with. Not sure why you're still watching. The video is over with. You can, you can turn it off now. This is the portion where I thank people on Patreon for supporting me. So thank you to the donors that have been backing me for the last couple of months now. It lets me create a bunch of different videos. And I know this is the series that you guys wanted to watch, so hopefully you're enjoying it so far. Now last time I got a lot of shit for the music that I put over this portion of the video. Apparently you don't like my weeb remixes, so I went with something a little more classical. A good old-fashioned polka. Who doesn't love a fucking polka? So I'm, I hope you enjoy that. That's just for you guys that didn't like the weeb anime shit. Now you've got some good old-fashioned music to listen to. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to put in the Spoonie video I didn't get a chance to. I, I was trying to edit it down so it wasn't outrageously long. I think the one I really wanted to touch on was Juan But Not Forgotten. Uh, for those that don't know, Spoonie's brother is a cop and he ended up killing a Mexican. And if you ever go into a Spoonie live stream and you dare to mention Juan But Not Forgotten or bring up Gardeners, he flips his fucking shit. He will ban you immediately. I watched days in a row where people were going in and saying that, and he was banning people left and right with no mercy. Really fucking pisses him off. Uh, for those of you wondering what the what the next part is going to be, who's coming up, I know some people were thinking Linkara is coming up next. Linkara is going to be the biggest video. Uh, you know, this is about a middle tier one. Doug Walker was fairly short. It was like 19, 20 minutes. This is about 30, 35 minutes. Linkar is going to be like an hour, so expect that to be near the end of it. Uh, next up, uh, you know, how do I give you a hint without spoiling it? Let's say it involves coat hangers. For those of you that get that reference, you'll understand immediately who's coming up next. Now, one of the other funny things, too, that happened right after the release of the first video is people from Channel Awesome and that guy with the glasses started to shut down their accounts. They were locking down social media and deleting things because apparently they were afraid I was coming after them. I'm, I'm not sure why that is. If you're some minor contributor, or if you haven't been involved in some massive shitstorm, I, I have no reason to talk about you. Well, I'm going to let the amazing music play us out. So once again, thank you to the people on Patreon supporting me. Uh, thank you to the people that aren't supporting me on Patreon. I, I hope you liked the video. You know, you gave it a watch, so hopefully it was worth your time.